In this tutorial, we are going to be discussing about how the motion editor works. Some people find animating in the motion editor can be very hard to use. But I would most likely think the motion editor is not meant for animations like the graph editor. Let me show you how it works. In the motion editor, you can see all of the time nodes are selected, which is green. Orange is when you change something while selected, and press enter, to deselect. You can drag the little arrows that are infinite. Or you can hold down the shift key and drag to make a selection. You can also hit Ctrl A, to select the entire timeline. If you hold down the shift key while using the mouse wheel, you can create some fallouts. You can move around the time selection or the fallouts. The fallouts in the motion editor has four modes. Number one is a linear. Number two, it starts off fast and then slows down. Number three, it does the opposite. And number four is an easing effect. There are a couple of tricks that the motion editor can do. So let's give the soldier a sequence to demonstrate. Open up the model and right click, then select import sequence. Here in the list we have a bunch of sequences that the soldier has, so I'll give him a running sequence. There are sliders here to control the sequence, and if we want him to move across the map. Go to this button right here, and select Pose Perm's Drive Route. If you hold down the Alt key, and drag the edge of the selection, you can shift the part of the time to go slow or fast. You can also do that with the fallouts, to shift them around. You can also press this button to make a keyframe, or you can just press M. If you want to get rid of the orange selection, go to this button right here to the right. Then uncheck Floating Modification Layer Enable. There are three buttons to change some with the running animation. Transform, Overwrite, and Offset. Transform will rotate everything to where you want the soldier to go to. Overwrite will replace everything when time is selected or cancelled. Offset, you can rotate the character only, but not the path animation. The procedurals are going to be your best friend when it comes to tweaking or adjusting your animations. Let's see what each procedural sliders does. Default, 0 half and 1, sets the character in the center of the map. But if you select all of the bones, and use them, it will distort the character in one spot on the ground. So I would prefer using the root, to put him in the center. The playhead is also very useful for things, it stops the animation where the playhead is. And it can also be useful for attachments or making an object to stop moving.
The in and out does the same thing as the play head, only the difference is, in is the starting animation, and the out is the finish animation. Paste is if you copy the sample by right clicking it, copy sample or control C. Then use the slider to paste it. Drop can only be affected by the other sliders. If I use the play head and use the drop slider, he comes back to his original state. Jitter will make your animation shake very useful for cameras and other things. Smooth will smooth out your animations to make it look more appealing. Stagger gives the animation a bit more realism to offset the animation. Hold will push the fallout curves away, in the middle of the selection is a hold. Release will do the opposite on what the hold does. Steady is like the stagger, but all sets a different way. Ramp creates linears such as a ball bouncing or other things. Spline can also be very useful for adjusting the smoothness for your animations. And finally round is also useful for changing the curves. So that's pretty much what the motion editor has to offer for animations. So I don't think that the motion editor is for animations. I think this is for tweaking your animations and adjusting them only. Hopefully you find this tutorial very useful. Soon in the next tutorial, we will be discussing about the graph editor. Leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.